Hey, what's up guys? KT Outdoors here. Today, we are prepping for the frost and trying to harvest and it has been dumb. Like there is just so much coming out of this garden. It's crazy. We're going to look at the final harvest-ish, final-ish, like the things I need to get out now because it's going to freeze tonight. We're going to look at that coming up next. Okay, so if you are here for the first time and you want to know where this thing started, I'll put a little link up top there that will take you to, you know, how we set up this garden, how we started building this greenhouse back here, and everything that we have going on. But you can see right down here some of these black leaves on these squash plants. Like they're not going to be super excited about how cold it's going to get here for a couple days. Last night's projected low, forecasted whatever, was I think 38. And we got some frost damage. Mostly, honestly, where it was, which is something to consider, is in the shade, right? So like these squash plants are in the shade of this corn. So we had frost damage here. Out there, I've already picked a bunch of it out but everything that was in the shade of that greenhouse, there was a big patch of kind of dead, wilty stuff out in there. You can see a little bit over on the edge here still. Um, just because it was too shaded. And so that caused it to, you know, get too cold first thing in the morning. Frost is a really interesting thing. If you haven't studied it much, you watch a forecast really close, like the one that we have tonight, right? Where it's gonna freeze. There's been freeze warnings projected for a while. Well, that freeze warning is from like two in the morning until eight or nine in the morning, right? Like sun's coming up at around eight o'clock. It's that last little bit of time at the end of the evening where it's been cold and the cold's been able to build that these early frosts can get you. So these plants are living proof at the moment right now. You've got a little bit of damage here on some of these edges. Right? But the plants themselves are still alive, still growing, they're still doing okay. So a really light frost, depending on the plants, won't kill them. Like that 38 degree forecast last night, I don't know what it got to specifically here locally, like in my yard, I was at work. But um, a light frost will knock the leaves back, particularly the kind of top growth. But it's not necessarily going to kill the plant if it's not kind of a harder freeze but you start to get down to like a projected low of 32 31 30 and then your local area is a little bit colder than that now it's a different ball game and so there's a really good chance depending on how much of this i get before the sun goes down that when i come out here tomorrow every one of these vines will just be laying down dead frosted off entirely and for certain plants if that happens <coughs> it doesn't really mean that you can't eat them Right, like if these pumpkins get frosted tonight and I don't pick them, which I'm going to try to do even if I have to have a headlamp on, if I don't pick them, they'll still be edible. What will not be very good for them is their ability to store for that long extended winter season, right? And by store, I mean like put it in a root cellar, put it in a cold basement, whatever, and just leave it alone and don't even worry about it. And you can come and get it, you know, we've eaten acorn squash and butternut squash and some of these things we've eaten those clear into like february even march easily just by storing them in our shed where we keep things just a tiny bit cool so and by cool i mean we keep the edge we have a, an electric heater in there to keep the edge off of freezing we just keep it down as low as it can go so that it doesn't ever freeze in there but it's also not set at like 80 so that it's too warm right so if you're stuck for space that's one potential method that has worked good for us but a light frost, not so bad. Hard freeze, potential problems. So that's why we're out here just trying to get everything we can off of these plants before they get a potential big zap tonight. Okay, so foreground right behind me here, 
I'll try to find some old, old photos or video footage of this trellis before we took all the tomatoes off of it a night or two ago because we knew we couldn't get it all in one night. Tomatoes are going to be a little bit different of the story. They're not going to like the cold weather. But you can see that even though we lost the, uh, well, let's walk over there. You can see that even though we lost some of the squash plants to some frost damage, we did not lose like anything on these, this cherry tomato, if anything, it feels even a little bit tougher than it normally does after just that light kiss of frost. The leaves look a little bit different to me, just kind of looking at them, but that could just be the light. Um, you know, so I mean like these flowers are still healthy and viable, but these plants that are tropical like this, right? So zucchinis, you know, your squashes, your tomatoes, your eggplants, your peppers, these things that are tropical, they do not like frost. And if they get frosted, game over. Like your, your fruit will wither. You're just going to have issues. Okay. So you want to do one of two things. So the experimental method that I might try here, I haven't quite decided yet. Dude, these sun gold tomatoes. If you've never had a sun gold cherry, you don't even know what you're missing out on. So, so good. One potential method for dealing with frost. If it's kind of light, you know, like 30, 31, maybe cover them. Okay, now, if you cover them in the evening like we have here, it doesn't even have to be clear, okay? Because car going by, let's wait. What you need to do is keep the frost off of their leaves. And so if you have something like this and it's big enough and strong enough to try to save, but you don't have time to get to it and pick it all, cover it, biz queen. And by biz, I mean like clear plastic, you know what I'm saying? Black plastic, like the tarp that you lay down on the ground, that's better than nothing. If you have old blankets that you don't care about, straight up tarps like camping tarps or cover your wood pile, you know, type tarps, like just cover them. Because if you can keep the frost from getting into the fruit and touching the vines and the, you know, the leaves and things, then they might make it through that freeze. So we might try that down here just for the fun of it and see if they make it. You never know. Some plants, less of an issue. So behind me, it's hard to see. I'll try to turn the camera around maybe and give you a closer look. But we have, you know, there's a big bok choy right there. There's a bunch of bok choy in this bed behind me. The next bed over has Swiss chard and behind that we have kale. Those things are not gonna be upset about getting a little bit frozen. In fact, they might taste better after getting a little bit frozen. The discerning eye, however, will notice that there's a lot of stuff that was cut off there. And that's because a couple nights ago, we completely butched as much as we could all of the cilantro that we had growing down here, volunteer from the seeds from our first planting of cilantro, which was an insane amount of cilantro. It's hanging up to dry in the house right now, so we can hopefully preserve it. That stuff is pretty tropical-ish, right? Like getting frozen, it, it, it would just be laying down dead down here if we left that go. Yeah, that statement I just made is completely and totally dead wrong. I had no idea, but apparently cilantro is very frost hardy. In fact, it is early November and my cilantro is still growing after multiple frosts, even though the bok choy, the kale, and the Swiss chard that were referenced as being tough experienced a little bit of damage from one of our more heavy frosts. So cilantro and cold weather our friends. These strawberries, I don't know. I think the strawberries might be a little bit okay. We've also got some ripe raspberries. Maybe we'll get them, maybe we won't. I just, does anybody else just love that cool feeling of fall coming on? Like, I'm not a huge fan of the hot, hot weather. So having this touch of fall weather is a welcome change in my book. Jalapeno peppers down here in the food forest must come out. They will not make it. Now these are in pots. And so one potential option if you have things like this that are potted is of course to put them somewhere protected and then they won't freeze. So you, if you have a greenhouse or something like that, you could move the pots into that space and they'll be good to go. 
This is the other experiment we're gonna run tonight. So in here we have lots of tomatoes, like lots of tomatoes. I think there's five Roma style tomatoes, some San Marzano's and some just straight up Roma's. They survived the first night with the door open, but now I'm nervous and so I tried to get down here as quick as I could after work, get the door closed so that some heat could kind of pool in there, get a little bit of sunshine at the end of the day. It's kind of shaded by this tree and the sun's setting right over there. So the amount of heat that it gets in the evening, not so great for wintertime, phenomenal for summertime because it keeps those plants from overheating. So everything's kind of a catch 22 when you're playing with temperate climates. But in theory, these tomatoes should make it through this night because you know, 30 degrees probably be okay. I'm anticipating that the leaves that are touching the edge of the tarp, like you can see some flowers right in here, there's some push right here on the edge. Those are the leaves on the inside pushing out on this plastic that's covering this. And it's just a single layer of plastic. So it's not a super sturdy greenhouse as far as like having that, you know, buffer of air in between to protect them. So the outside edges will very likely get frosted, but hopefully it's enough protection that the plants stay alive, similar to what we saw with the squash up in the other garden just some outside leaves get frosted. You lose some of that foliage, but the rest of the plant stays alive, which means the fruit is still harvestable and can maybe even continue to ripen if the weather stays warm enough to not completely freeze the whole plant. Something else to consider, unplug your hoses, let that water drain out. I had one of these nice wands that I really love to water with and we had a light frost like this and I didn't even think about it and it froze hard enough that this entire end of this thing just busted right out and it was ruined. So make sure that you have frost like this coming in that your hoses and things are unhooked. Okay, final prediction. This space is gonna be a mess. This is, you know, the video that was the, the vine or the plant, I can't remember what I titled it. Anyway, the, the thing that ate my garden is this variety of butternut squash that we planted down here. And I'm really, really sad about the fact that I got it in a little bit too late. There are some absolutely massive squash in here. I'll probably cut a couple of the biggest ones out tonight just to see, but they are so, so green still. I just got it in too late and I don't think the plant had enough time to fully mature. And so we might just have to see if they ripen on their own, fingers crossed, maybe. If nothing else, they might make cool decorations for the pumpkins this fall. But, full anticipation that this entire thing will be laid down tomorrow morning. The light frost we had last night did some damage on it as well, so a harder frost tonight might be more than it can handle. I'll turn the camera around so you can see a bit of the damage and maybe go find that huge, huge, huge squash that I know was in there. can't even get this thing oh well I guess we're gonna pick it because <laughs> there she goes <laughs> look at that thing it's just insane like literally I can barely get it in the camera shot and this is supposed to be a butternut which means you know it's supposed to be tan and yellowish or whatever and it's nowhere near ripe but it's done now. All right, well, I'm running out of daylight. I still got a lot of stuff to pick. I was down there looking at some of that other stuff and realized there's cucumbers down there that need to come out. There's the peppers. There's a couple varieties of hot peppers down there. There's a couple eggplant that might be useful. So if you're just scrambling to get it done. Days are getting shorter, but that's garden in the fall. This video, I mean, like right now, I'm not gonna edit this tonight. I won't have time because I'm going to be dealing with all of this stuff. So I'll be sure tomorrow morning to come out and get some footage of the aftermath of a light frost just so that you have a sense of what you can expect. And then we'll be able to take a closer look at some of the things that I actually did get done to try to save this stuff.
So you can see from this little bit of footage and the clip that I put in earlier with the tarp laying on the ground covered, the tomato, the cherry tomatoes with the tarp totally worked. Also some of that footage from earlier down by the greenhouse showed that I was exactly right. The foliage touching the plastic died, but the stuff inside stayed perfectly healthy and we were able to harvest a pile of Roma tomatoes out of there that were able to ripen indoors and continue to produce for us. So overall, we survived the frost as best as I guess could be expected. And we're starting to get ready for next year's growing season. So hope you guys enjoyed this broadcast. We'll, uh, I guess I should say episode. We'll uh, see you next time. And remember, life's better when it's lived outdoors. Thanks for watching. <laughs>